Hey guys, in this video, the brilliant Mr. B is going to be working you through how to find averages from charts. So lots and lots of examples here at three different levels. He's going to work you through them at a really, really nice, slow pace so that you don't have to be stressed or worry about other people watching you or judging you. You can do this at your own pace. And then if you want more examples to practice, there are thousands just waiting for you over my website. We're going to have a look at finding averages from charts. Now, so far with things like pie charts, bear charts, you've been finding, you know, the kind of size of the bears, you know, the angles in the pie charts. What we're going to find here is other information you can find from those things. So we'll start off with tally charts. And the first question is, what is the mode amount paid in the tally chart? So we have a tally chart with money. Now, with the mode, you might remember from looking at averages and look at that video if you haven't already, that the mode is the most common number. Now, a lot of students have trouble with this because they look at the table and they think, okay, well, I can see that we have two twos and we have two threes and we have two fours. So they might say that there's no mode or they might even choose one of those numbers. Now, what you have to understand here is that these numbers are all representing different things. Some of the twos represent pounds and some represent a value to, which is actually how many one pounds there are. So you can't just find the most common number in the diagram. That's not how it works. So what do we mean by the most common? Well, look at the tally. For the one pound, you've got two lines on the tally. For the two pound, you've got zero lines. For the three pound, you've got four lines. That means there's four lots of three pound. And the four pound goes back down to two. So the most common is actually the three pound. It's a three pound because the four is the highest number. So when we say most common, when he's finding it from a diagram, it's not like doing it from a list of numbers and you find the most common number, it's going to be the highest value. So the most common is also going to be the highest value. And this diagram, it's the four. And the four's not the answer because it's representing the three pounds. So what is the mode amount paid? It is three pounds. Now, question two, we're going to find the median amount spent on snacks. Now, again, from a list, what you would do is you would put all the numbers in order. So we've got a one, a three, we've got a two, we'll put in between, and we've got a seven. And you want to find the middle number. So that would be in between two and three, and it's 2.5. And that is wrong. So you can't just put the values in order. It's not going to work that way. You've got to think, what is the tally chart actually representing? What it's representing is that we have seven lots of one pound. Let's draw them out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we have two lots of two pound, three lots of three pound, and we have one lot of four pound. So the tally chart is actually representing this list of numbers. And then the normal thing you would do is find the middle number. So for this, we'll cross off the largest. And keep crossing off the smallest and largest in pairs until we only have one or two numbers left. So cross off the smallest and largest in the pair. And the middle number is actually a one. So what's the median number spent on snacks? It is one pound. Now, how can we calculate that without doing the list? Because sometimes when I get a tele chart, it's got hundreds of items of data in it. And you don't want to be producing such a large list. So we need a different method. Now, before I show you the method, Let's just have a look at the numbers that we have here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now seven is the seventh number, that's the median. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We have 13 numbers all together. Now, how can we figure out that we've got 13 numbers from just a child chart? Well, you can add up the values. Seven plus two plus three plus one will give you 13. Now, how can we get from the 13 to the seven, which is the middle number? You might think, well, divide by two. And actually 14 divided by two gives us seven. That 13 is quite close. And actually this leads us to the formula. What we need to do is you take the total, in this case it's 13, which you get from the values. You add one to it, and then you divide by two. And that will give you the seventh value. Only the seventh value corresponds to one of the ones, which is the middle number. Why do we have to add one? 
Well, sometimes you might know that when you find the median, you might have two numbers in the middle. So the adding the one and then dividing by two gives you the possibility of getting a 0.5 as well. So it just kind of like makes things work out. Maybe you can consider that, that you're including kind of a zero in this as well, the zero number. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to about that in between working out that I did because this is not the method you're going to use it'll take too long. So we add up the values, which was the 13, add on one, and then divide by two. And that'll give us the middle number. How do we find the middle number, the seventh number, just from the diagram? Well, look at the tallies. So we've got in the first section, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the seventh tally that I drew is in the one pound section. So normally answers a pound. Then after that, we'd have the eighth and ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, and then the thirteenth tally. So you're just counting your way through the tally chart until you get to that middle number. Moving on to question three, we're going to find the mean. Now with the mean, this is a little bit more similar to how you do it as a list of numbers. And what you need to do is you need to add up the values. So one plus two plus five plus one, which will give us nine. And then we'll need to divide by how many we have. Now, how many values do we have? We have four sets of values. Or another thing is you can be adding up how many sections you have. And we have four sections all together. Then what is the mean? It's the total, add them all up, divided by how many, how many groups you have. So the total of the values is nine. We have four different sections. So nine divided by four is going to give us two and a quarter or 2.25. And then I'll take the units into account as well. It's going to be in pounds. So it's going to be two pounds and a quarter will be the uh, two five. 25p is a quarter of the whole pound. So to sum up, to find the mean, it's the total, how many you have in total, divided by the number of groups, how many groups you have. So you add up all the value, you get nine, and there are four different groups to divide the nine by. Next, we're going to look at lower and upper quartiles. Now, what a lower and upper quartile is, you do the lower quartile first. It's the median of the median. So it's the middle of the middle. Now, when we're kind of saying that the median is a middle number, that's 50% of the way through the data. It's the middle number. So the mean and the median, it's the middle of the middle. That's going to be 25% of the way through. And the upper quartile is going to be 75% of the way through the data. So we're going to work it out in a similar way to what we did with the median. So we're going to add up all of the values. So 5 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2. And that's going to give us 11. And like we did with the median, we are going to be adding one to it. Now, to find the median of the median, we can divide it by two to find halfway. Or what we could do is we could divide it by two twice to find the median of the median, which is the same as dividing by four. That gives us 12 divided by four, which will give us the third value. So we go through the tele chart, and we're going to have the first, second. Then we have the third value, then the fourth and the fifth the 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th. And you can see that where the third value was, I'm out in green, it's in the one pound section. So what money bracket is the lower quartile in? It's in the one pound section. Same thing with the upper quartile. So we are going to take the values, four, three, one, two, and five, add all of those up, and that gives us 15. I'm going to add one to it. Now, for the upper quartile, what we need to do is to find 75% of the way through. If you think about 50% is half, the same as divide by two. 25% is the same as divide by four. So what we could do is divide by four to get 25%, and then we could multiply by three. So we're going to have 16 divided by four, which is four. That's a lower quartile. And then times it by three for 75% which is going to give us 12, the 12th value. Then we go through the teller chair and we try and find the 12th mark we make. So we do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Then we have the 12th value, so that a different colour, 13, 14, and then the 15th value. So I've traced our way through all the values in the teller chair and the place where I found the 12th value was at £5. So what money bracket is the upper quartile in? It's £5. 
And one last thing I'm going to do is to circle my answers for all of these so it's distinct from my working out. So it's clear which number it is, which is the answer. So now let's do the same thing for bar charts. So we're starting off with a mode. If you remember the easy questions, the mode is the kind of the, the highest value. And so in the first bar chart, the highest bar is apple. It sits up at six, blueberries at four, and bananas at three. So what is a mold fruit? It's the most common, it's the highest bar, it's apple. And to convince you this is true, if this was a list, so we'd have, for example, four blueberries, we would have six apples, and we would have three bananas. You can see from that list, I've got more A's than anything else. So we're not just looking at the heights, the bears, the four, the six, and the three for our numbers. We're actually looking at what the bear represents. And so apple has the most of six apples. That's the highest number. Moving on to question two, for the mean of the given data set, we have some more fruits. So if the mean, we're going to add them all up and divide by how many? So we have five for apple, three for blueberry, three for banana, and six for grape. So when we're adding them all up, we're going to add up the heights of every single bear. And that gives us altogether 17. Then we need to divide by how many? Well, how many do we have? We have four bears. So we're going to do 17 divided by four. And that's going to give us our final answer, which is 4.25 or four and a quarter. Now, what does this mean? We've got apple, blueberry, banana, and grape. How is 4.25 the mean of those words? You have to think about what you've found here. We've not found the mean fruit. This isn't about the fruit, like the mold is. What we've found is the mean height of the bears. So on average, we could say that we have four and a quarter of each fruit. Obviously, a couple of them are a little bit lower and a couple are a little bit higher than that. So the mean is 4.25 fruit or quantity of fruit. Now moving on to question three, this can get a little bit confusing because it's a histogram, there are no gaps between the bears, however the label at the side is frequency. It's not frequency density if you've done any histograms before. So what we have here is a simple histogram and so we don't have continuous data, we've got some categories. So we've got 1 to 5, 6 to 12, 13 to 15, and 19 to 26. Now, with the more complicated histograms, you're doing some maths with those numbers. Because this is not continuous data, you know, there's a, there's not a, there's a gap in between five and six. You'll get, you know, five and a half marks, for example. It's discrete data, it's just counting. There's no in-between values. So as we take it in the kind of same way we take a normal bear chart. So when we ask for the mode from this histogram, we'll look for the highest bear, the frequency is five, and so which score selection is the mode? It's the one that corresponds to that highest bar, which is 13 to 15. Now, if you had a more complicated histogram, it didn't say frequency at the side, it said frequency density, then there'll be a lot more maths involved in this. But for a simple histogram, it'll work the same way as a bar chart. Moving on to question four, we have a missing bar that we're going to draw on. Now, it says if four to 10 is the mode by two, draw on the missing category. So what we need to do is just check, is it frequency? It is frequency. You know, it says frequency at the side. It's going to work the same way as a bar chart. The yeah, frequency density at the side, it's a more complicated topic. I need to watch the histograms video. Now, the mode is the most common number. It's just going to be the highest bar. So it's a mode by two. It's going to be two higher than next smallest. Next smallest is the one to three at eight. So the missing bar is going to go all the way up to 10 because that's too higher. It'll make it be the mode by two. It's too higher than the next highest. So all I'm going to do now is draw the bear for this. So use a ruler, make sure it's nice and straight. And to save time, I'm just going to highlight this quite quickly. But you get the idea. That is where your bear should be. Moving on to question five, it's the same kind of thing. We have a missing bear that we are going to draw. The 10 to 18 group and the 19 to 23 group are both the mode. So if they're both the mode, they're both going to be the most common. Now you can have a type rate, you can have um, more than one mode. So all it's going to mean is that the missing one will be exactly the same height as the other mode. Now again, this is only going to work if it says frequency on the y-axis. It says frequency density, then there will be more maths involved in this with the kind of widths of the bars as well. But again, that is a later topic. 
Now for the herd questions, we're going to look at the same thing for pie charts. So again, I'm going to be asked for the mode and the mode. It's not going to be the highest bar this time. It's not going to be the largest kind of um, frequency in a tele telechart. What this is going to be is the largest section of the pie chart. And we can see the largest one is going to be orange juice. And we can see this section here. I'm just going to outline it so we can see how large it is. But it's going to go, it's going to take more than half of the pie chart. So we can see how much bigger it is than the other two sections combined. So now I've identified the largest section. I identify the word that goes with it. It's orange juice. And so that's going to give my answer. What is the mode drink? It's orange juice. Do the same thing for the next one. We've got some sports, hurdles, running, cricket, and tennis. Which one is the largest? Now, the orange and purple sections both look like the fairly large. I think the orange one is slightly larger. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight that just so you can just see for sure how big it is. Definitely looks a little bit bigger than the pink section. And we have to identify which word goes with this. So it's orange, and that is representing cricket in the key. So what is the mode sport? It's cricket. Moving on to question three, which two sports add up to the same score as the mode? So the first thing to do is to find the mode, and it looks like the red section's the largest. That would mean if we're looking for it, the mode would be handball. And that, this is going to be important, has got 16 people in the group. So which two are going to add up to 16? So looking at it, basketball's eight, is there another eight to go with basketball? It doesn't look like it. So it's not going to be basketball. And perhaps instead of eliminated that, perhaps we can just put a little cross through it. It can't be basketball. There's nothing to go with it to make the 16. Well, what about football? Football six, I'll need a 10 to go with it. And actually, we do have a 10. It's a badminton. You can see the football and the badminton both add up to 16, the same as handball. Horse riding's five. And, you know, we need an 11 to go with that to get a 16. And we don't have that. So which two sports add up to the mode? It's going to be the football and badminton. Perhaps we'd like to add some evidence to this. So football is six, badminton is 10, and they add together to make the 16, which is the same as handball. Now we're gonna move on to find the mean of pie charts. And it's not too bad, it's the same as you would do with a bear chart. So we're gonna add up all the numbers. We've got badminton, which is nine, swimming is six, rugby is four, and cricket is 10. So we're going to add up the total of all the values we have. We're going to add them all up. And that is going to give us 29. Then we're going to divide by how many. Now, how many do we have? Well, we have four sections. And 29 divided by four is going to give us 7.25 or seven and a quarter. So the mean number of people in a sport is seven and a quarter. We can do the same thing with question five. So it's simply a case of identifying how large each group is. So I'm going to start going clockwise around from rugby. We have six for rugby, 13 for handball, five for badminton, five for swimming, and nine for football. If you're struggling keeping up with this, you know you can cross them out as you go. So we've got the rugby, the handball, the badminton, the swimming, and the football. Make sure you don't go all the way around and keep going and then do the rugby again and get an extra value. And if we add them all up, we are going to get 38. So if we take the 38, how many sections are there all together? And it might be helpful to label this. So for example, the last question, I should have it there. So we add one, two, three, four, just so you don't miscount. So four was right for question four. So for question five, we've got one, two, three, four, five sections. So I've clearly shown that there are five sections. We're going to do 38 divided by five, and that's going to give us... 7.6 or to simplify this 7 and 3 fifths. It doesn't matter if you write 7.6 or 7 and 3 fifths, whichever you're most comfortable with.